One second here. I will um, I will do that real quick. Okay. There we are. Now these guys are there. Now if I go Jetscape user hundred to one twenty five. Just change these guys here, 125. Okay, next guy. So, five to 150. Fifty one twenty five and fifty. Okay, and now simply go into the build directory and then run Jetscape config. There it is. This is running. This is basically giving you some information about the hydro profile. It was loaded. And basically, it's the same process. You have to do this uh, four more times or three more times to get the uh, Well, it takes a little bit longer now, I guess, because I'm sharing, I'm screen sharing at the same time. 
But yes, so now we have to repeat this a few more times. Let me just do it one more time. And then I will go on to the next step. Okay, now the hydro has been loaded. Don't worry about these warnings. This, this I've already explained in the chat, but this is coming from um, or heavy quarks when we try and sample the virtuality and um, or the, the, the splitting fraction. Um, sometimes given the, 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 the number of tries that we have, uh, we run out and every time we run out of the number of tries, the, this, this warning message is, is, is printed out. There we go. Now it's much better. Okay, let me do one last one. There we are. Okay. So now you see LVT matter results is over here. And the idea is you go into the build directory. You will see that you have three cross section files and three test.out files. And now it's just a question of copying these guys over. Okay. But I think I've already I already have those guys in my because I, I tried it over the weekend. Yeah, there they are. Right, so I already I already did it and I already copied it over. Okay. So this is what uh, so these are the 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 uh, everything that we were going to be running the cross sections, the final hadrons, and of course the full events. The last thing that I'm going to ask you guys, but that's, that's not a, 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 in this session, it's gonna be in the next session, is to copy over the analysis uh, scripts, okay? And as you can see here, there is a solution which I will be posting online uh, after the, the school. But also I will present for every single section, there's gonna be three sections in this analysis script for every single one of them. Uh, on, 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 on the slides that I will be showing you, there will be a solution for all of them before we go on to the next one. Okay. The idea is that because all of these things are now copied over into this matter LBT results folder, um, the, this is accessible outside of the Docker container, right? So in order to be able to generate the, the cross section, the final hadrons and, and, and the full events. Of course, for that, you need a Docker container. But once this is done, the actual analysis script does not require any of Jetscape. It's just a simple, uh, uh, because all of these files are simple text files, you can open them up in, in, in any editor that you want. 
and in principle, uh, not only in principle, in practice as well, uh, when we're going to be doing in the analysis uh, uh, script, you can do it and you can edit everything inside of the Docker container. That's fine. But if you want to use your favorite editor uh, that is uh, going to be a little bit more involved now that the analysis script is going to require some coding on your behalf, you can do that outside of the Docker container as well. And that's the purpose why we put all of these things inside of this matter LBT results. It's because that folder is visible both inside of the Docker container and outside. Okay. So as far as plotting goes, uh, uh, for the final thing where you can use whatever, whatever, tool, whatever tool you want. And in principle, the final, the final file that we're gonna be creating is this Hadron yield, okay? Uh, this, this file is essentially just a simple text file with uh, a, a handful of columns and um, that you can plug with whatever, whatever tool you like, right? You can use the, the, the Jupyter notebook or even actually just simple GNU plot is, is, is anybody who has either a Linux or a, or a Mac distribution should have GNU plot installed. Um, yeah, nothing more is required than a simple GNU plot to plot, uh, to plot this. There's no need for, for any, um, any fancy uh, uh, data processing or plotting tools for that matter. Um, you can, just a simple text file with a couple of columns. Okay, so how are we doing? Have people caught up? What's, what's happening? Um, so how, how, pe how many people are, are, are done with the, uh, uh, generating the, uh, let's say the, the, the final hadrons answer yes or no in the, um, in the poll on zoom. We have three nows. Okay, so if these people have any issues, maybe they should write in the Slack channel, and then we can uh, put them onto um, the on, onto the help desk with Chuck to try and resolve any um, any issues that they may be having. I think at this point, in light of time, if I want to uh, try and finish and go over the the analysis script, I think we should move on. So let me stop sharing my, uh, my thing here and let's go back to sharing the slides. Okay, where are we now? Okay, we have done all of this, we were here. Okay, so now in principle, uh, you have generated the final state hadrons and you've copied them over into uh, matter LBT results. So the next question is to uh, tackle the analysis script. So that thing uh, can be found in the uh, Jetscape cross-section example. And there you will see analysis scripts.cc as well as a make file, which it's a very simple make file. You, you can open it if you want to look at what, what's in there, but it's very, very simplistic. Um, so as, as, as I've already mentioned at this point, uh, since, since we, so the first step over here that I should, I should mention is, is that you should copy over the, the uh, from cross-section example, the make file and the analysis script into uh, matter LDT results, okay? in such a way that, that these two things, the, the make file and the analysis scripts are, are visible outside of the Docker container, okay? So then the next thing uh, that I want you guys to do is to open up the analysis script and sort of to, uh, to read the first uh, 100 or so lines up until you will, you will hit the, um, the, uh, the first step, which is, which is written in the, in, in the, in, in, in the code. Uh, the only thing that I would like you to modify right out right now is essentially, so this is the sort of the big, the first few couple of lines at the beginning of the code. 
what, what you need to modify now for the analysis scripts is the number of PT headbands, which is over here, as well as the, the range of these uh, PTs. Okay. So once you have modified that, I will give you a minute or two. Then we can go on, on to the next step, which is essentially to bend the particles. Okay. So let me give you another minute or two, and then we can... Uh, you can go on to the first for to the first uh, part of the exercise. Abhijit, are you still recording? Abhijit may have stepped away. I'm chairing this, Peter, uh, but I see recording on. Okay, very good. I'll give you guys another minute to edit this. And then in the meantime, I will have a look and see what's happening on the, on the Slack channel. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. So let's go on to the next, uh, next section. Okay, so this is sort of the first question. And after I show the, the, the solutions to this question, which is on the next slide, on slide 11, uh, you can stop the recording before we start the next, um, um, the next question. So I have posted some instruction on 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 uh, on this Ingrid Indico web page under under my my session about the three steps that we're going to be doing. So that should be on uh, the second to last page. Okay. So what I first want you guys to do is I want you guys to read sort of the first 115 lines of the analysis script, and uh, all the variables and principles should be defined there. Um, but if you have any questions, now would be the time to ask them, either uh, pre preferably on Slack, actually. That way uh, everybody can see your question and I can answer it or any of the TAs can answer them. Okay. So uh, I will give you guys a few minutes to, to read over that and then uh, I will uh, come back to this. Um, I will, in the meantime, I'll, I'll have a look at what's happening on Slack and then I'll come back to my slides. Sorry, Gorko. Uh, did you want to stop and restart the recording? I missed that. Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. So the the we will stop after this. Um, so on the next slide, I'm going to be so showing the solution to step one. At that point, we can stop the recording. Okay. So there's two extra steps. So it's, it, it, in principle, um, I believe a widget stopped the recording at some point once. Uh, that was essentially for the to catch up with the homework. Right, so that's everything prior up to here. Should have been an extra, um, should have been one recording, but it does, if, if, if it's not, it's still okay. It's sort of a catch up and then this is the, this is the first segment. And then in here we can stop and then start another one for the, for the uh, on slide 12. And now we are on slide uh, 10, right down below here.
Okay. So are there any questions regarding this uh, first 115 lines or so? Before the step one, just answer, uh, well, you just post your questions in Slack. Um, if you don't have any questions, uh, then uh, and you're ready to move uh, with the rest of the step one, then you can click yes, that you're ready to move with step one, otherwise click no. And uh, if it's no, then, you know, either post your questions in Slack, um, but that will do the poll now. So who is ready to move on to step one? Please answer yes on the poll. I'm seeing a growing list of yeses. <clears throat> We're now at 18 yeses. And um, some people are asking for more time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing that. I, 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 I'm asking where they're at, just so I can gauge how much time that I do, do they need. Okay, good. So that person that needed more time was slowly reading through the, the thing. Very good. We're at 22 yeses and two noes. Okay. In principle, the code um, should show that um, basically I'm defining a whole bunch of variables and some of them are actually going to be used to read the, the, the uh, final state hadron file. And the only thing that I've commented out is once all of those variables are read in and are properly stored, the only thing that I've commented out is what do you do with them, okay? Okay, at this point, I think I'm going to uh, move on because I can, we can still answer all of those questions uh, as you're writing the code. So the idea is uh, now that the, the files are all loaded up, uh, you have uh, all of the, the, the variables uh, such as the PT of the, of the, of the Hadron has been uh, loaded up and calculated. You have also the particle ID that is being loaded up as well. Okay, and then uh, uh, rapidity or ADA is already being uh, loaded up as well. Okay, so now the, it's, it's really a question of if I am a pion, would I get in, in that, that, that is in a particular PT range, which is also calculated as well. It's one of the defined variables. Can't uh, see your then, mouse. Are you using your mouse? I can't no, see No, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't using my mouse, but I can put it on here. So the question, the, the idea is that in the, in the analysis script, all of the variables are already preloaded. Um, I guess I could share at this point my, uh, stop sharing this and then actually share the, the screen. So let me do that. Okay, so let me get out of this, stop sharing that. Let me go back to the Docker container Start sharing over here. Let me share this. Let me just open up in Vim. The analysis. Uh, that's okay. We don't always find. Okay, so this is the, the actual PT bin of the pion. This is the min, that's the max. This is the rapidity. That's the wind, that's the, the bin width. So max minus min divided by the number of bins. These are your counters. So this is where you need to add a plus one to be able to, once you have a particular uh, hadron being read. So 
opening up the file, opening up the cross section. Okay, initializing the, the, the bin counters to zero. And now we have particle ID, stat, you don't have to worry about that for the, for the time being, right? So now we've, we know what the particle is being written. That's on the line here on the top. Okay, so we know the particle ID. We know it's PX and PY. Okay, so from PX and PY, you can calculate PT, which is just uh, the, uh, the, the, the PX squared plus PY squared square root of the entire thing. We know what eta it is. Okay, and then you're saying, if I have a pion, which sits inside of one of these bins, add plus one to the hard counter, okay? If, in addition to that, you are um, if your stat is one, if your stat is zero. So it's, if, your, if your stat is not equal to minus one, which is for recalls, which we don't have at the time, then just add that to the, to the counter. So let me go back now very quickly into the, um, let me stop sharing this. So all the, basically all of the variables are already loaded in here. Okay, and then we're just going to, going to use this variable, that variable and PX and PY to try and calculate uh, to, to bend things in, the, in, the, in here, in this, array, in this array, okay? So let me stop sharing this and let me go back to sharing my slides. There we are. So charge, so all of pions is what we want to bend. So charge pions have a PID of uh, plus or minus uh, 211. Neutral pions have PID of 111. So if you're a pion, okay, and if you, you, you reside in a particular PT, hat, a PT bin, okay, then add a plus one counter to this thing, to this array, okay? So, for, so if you're curious where uh, uh, all of the particle IDs can be found, that can be found over here. That's the website. It's a hyperlink. So in principle, you can just copy paste that. Um, so this is for pions, but all the other particles are, are, are in here, okay? And of course, we are only binning particles. Um, can you make it full screen? Yes, I can. Uh, there's a typo here, actually. So minus one is recoiled, so not minus one. Okay. And the mouse. And the mouse. Here we are. Okay. So the, the quick one the comment that I wanted to make while you guys are working at writing this little piece of code is to say that uh, you can have recoil part uh, partons those are essentially partons that exist in the coagulum plasma and they were promoted to be part of the jet because after exchanging uh, energy and momentum uh, between the, the, the parton in the coagulum plasma and the parton in the shower, that parton from the coagulum plasma has picked up enough energy and momentum to now be far away from the, from the QGP in terms of energy. So typically the partons in the QGP have an energy around the temperature. So if you become several times uh, more in temperature than that, then you, you are promoted to become part of the shower, okay? So if you wanna allow the code to be able to do that, you essentially need to add an extra line in the code, and that is to say recoil on in the energy loss. Uh, so this is just a, an excerpt, a small excerpt in the user XML. So if you want to turn recoil on, this line is what you need to add, okay? Uh, so basically, as, as James already explained on Monday, the idea is that um, all, of the, all, of the, all of these different switches, so to speak, have already been defined in the master XML. So if you see any of the switches that you would like to either turn on or turn off, you can also always look at the mass master XML to see where they're defined. And in the same location where they're defined in the master XML, uh, if you want to turn them on in the user XML or turn them off, what you just need to do is to, in the user XML in that location, uh, uh, put, put that flag there and turn it on or off. So in, for instance, in here, uh, if you want to turn on the, the flag for matter, 
for recoil. Then under the e-loss section of your XML, you go under the matter section, and then there you add an extra line saying, here, now turn this thing on. Okay, that's, that's the idea. And then, then you will create particles with both uh, stat equals minus one. So those are the recoil particles and also uh, the non-recoil guys. And those, if you have that, those will be in the uh, soft induced uh, uh, variable name. So at the end, uh, DPT count, hard induced is those that are pure, purely coming from the shower and soft induced, what I mean by this is that those are the, the QGP particles uh, that that's written over here that have been promoted because they've gained enough energy and momentum not to be part of the QGP anymore, but have been promoted to be part of the shower. Okay, and then those you, you would been in principle in, 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 in this bin over here. So the code that I've written over there is actually more generic uh, uh, than, or more general, I should say, than what we actually need for today. Um, and also includes the possibility for having these recoil particles. But let's not focus on them today. Let's just focus on the actual hard guys. Okay. So I hope this was clear enough. If it's not, please ask questions in the Slack and I will try and answer them. But uh, at this point, I guess uh, we can stop the recording because the next slide I'm gonna actually uh, uh, show the solutions to this and then immediately uh, move on, on to the next, uh, onto the next step, okay?